First of all, it feels like an anime and I love anime. Second, I love how we have the characters front and center and like we're introducing them and it just ends like this. That just is a very good yeah, presentation. Yeah. Did you make this? I did edit that myself. I actually am a video editor, freelance video editor by day, comic idiot by night. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I do write the comics. I don't draw. I can't flex that muscle like Creative Welshman. Uh, so shout out to my man Goichi Monji, who I've been working with for three years, who does all the art for Bond of the Blade. I was so impressed with like his first few commissions that I was I basically hired him that same day. But yeah, we definitely had to go with that that 90s anime feel. And not only the anime, but if you've ever played like old school, like arcade beat em up games, there's also a little bit of that that I borrowed. These people, these friends who are coming together to save their city from all these criminal elements. It just so happens that my people are martial artists who are empowered by a guardian angel and they're fighting a mega gang that has demonic powers. And then also I want to shout out Doc Sparks. He actually made that instrumental. That's uh, the Roroni Kenshin, one of the ending songs that was one of the mainstays on Toonami. That is the perfect sound representation for Bond of the Blade because it's literally Eastern anime manga meets hip hop. Eastern philosophy, Eastern media expression, plus Western culture, Western people, you know, not just, you know, Black American, but we even got a little bit of African in this as well. I think you nailed it, the trailer because, you, like you said, you want to present everything in a certain way with what you had. And I think this works. You get like a feel for the theme and the, yeah, the theme of where they are and everything, the environment. And they look like they're ready to fight. They look badass. They look like they're here to, to save people. You know, they look like heroes. Yeah. I mentioned earlier that uh, the heretics are empowered by a guardian angel. So we're actually meeting her. This is Ashira. The story behind her is she actually is several thousand years old. I think of her like a mix between Jarvis and Professor X. Not only is she the source of their powers, but she also guides them. She sort of acts as almost like a spiritual spidey sense and almost like coaches them because they're already good martial artists, but now they're much stronger and they have powers. So, you know, they're still learning how to do all of this. But her whole story is she was like a great warrior and protecting humanity and everything. And she actually died a few hundred years ago. But when she died, she fused her spirit with the sword that the leader Shen actually uses. The other people that we see next to her are, are kind of like over the years, different people who are actually all members of Terry's family. Uh, that's the Shen's real name, Terry. She was like the family guardian angel going back like 70, 80 years until we get to, to Terry and his other friends who they decide they're going to take up the sword and the masks and really dedicate dedicate energy to to saving their city that's awesome i love her design <laughs> yeah i can like go really leaned into the akira toriyama-ness of his art style when he did her one thing i do want to point out if you see in some of the art her hair changes just a little bit because she always had the locks but when go first started drawing her she had like the pure like straight lines on the outside it's very subtle changes but all he did was he changed the way he did the outside of the lock. So it went from having the straight lines to the more crunchy lines. Because I'm like, you know, hair should have texture to it. Like it's specifically her hair, even though she's mm -hmm. not human, she's obviously meant to, you know, look like a black person. So like her hair should have more of a slightly like kinky texture to it. So all mm -hmm. he did was make the lines more crunchy. And I'm like, yo, you just took her design from like 90% to 125%. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's it when an artist evolves like that, it's just like, don't do anything else. Just stop. Yes. Stop and, right there. And <laughs> exactly. And he's done similar things. It, it's those things that don't necessarily matter in the bigger picture, but it's small details it's, like that. And mm -hmm. he's done, he's leveled up the way he does all of their hair because like most of the cast is black. So the way he does their hair actually looks more like that texture that you would expect. So like big shout out to my artist for that. When you find that person or those people who like really get your vision, almost like it's their own project, it is, it is pure chef's kiss. They bring more to the table versus just drawing it for you. And that's always awesome. And I love that you point out like, look what he did and he made a change, but it's amazing. You know, like yeah, that's people love their artists and definitely praise them. But sometimes I don't see, I don't want to say I don't see enough of it, but I think people get kind of forget like, cause you're so like, you just naturally know, yep, they're good. 
but then we forget to say it, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I am, you know? <laughs> I am definitely on team give them their flowers, you know, and I'm here to give Go his flowers, especially just the fact that he was willing to take that criticism because it wasn't coming from a place of this is bad. It was more like, this is good. Now yeah. I, I have a, a suggestion about how it could even be better. And he took that and learned. This is the first time he's drawn a lot of black people, having a lot of female characters, but we've been working together for so long that now he's doing it on a way where it's like, yo, some of this is better than I ever imagined it. I love that. It's it's so nice to be able to work with someone that is willing to like coach you through drawing characters or like different hairstyles and stuff that maybe you're not so, like used to doing or you just never thought about it, you know. So the fact right. you're able to like to help him along with that and he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, I I got it. That's a really good working relationship. I feel like that's not the norm where it's like, oh yeah, well, this is actually how it's done just to help you draw this better. And that's really good that you guys have that type of relationship. 100%. A little bit about the background. I did mention that they're fighting against this mega gang. They're known as the Zealots. And the thing that makes them so dangerous is, in addition to their numbers, they also have this drug they use called the demon drug that sort of gives them uh, synthetic powers similar to the heretics. And that's part of how they control the streets. So basically what we see in here is the guy above in the red jacket, Fat Sacks, who's basically, um, insert early 2000s popular rapper here. They're having a deal with like these mafioso guys. They're basically giving them some of the demon drug for a big payday. But because the heretics there, you know, they're on their ninja shit. They already got the drop on them. So we got the heretics zip zapping and boom bapping around the room. We got people trying to shoot them. We got my girl Chant there. And you can see the little that little flame on her shoulder. Oh, That's yep. Ashira. On like a, almost like a, hey, listen, but like the not uh, <laughs> annoying version. <laughs> not nagging. And, right. And that, that was actually Go's idea. Because since when we started drawing Ashira to have that more flame spiritual look, he had the idea of, hey, how can we represent her talking to them in battle that doesn't require her to always fully be on the on panel? And he was just like, what if she was like this blue flame? If she's frustrated she'll be the blue flame with that little anime vein pulsating or if she's embarrassed she'll be like the flame with that big teardrop yes uh jared just put it great uh it's navi yeah, like but navi. you don't want her to die <laughs> i like that yes one thousand percent and i definitely i just wanted some pages to um to show off just how outclassed like the average person is when fighting them because like this is them still relatively early in their superhero careers. But like, if all you carry in, which you was like a gun or something, like Shen just descends and just slashes the gun in pieces. This big guy is wailing on Vice there and he's just like, yawn, I'm bored. <laughs> Clock. This, this guy goes flying <laughs> right i see and that's why i fuck with go so hard because he perfectly uh matches that like serious actually like high octane action with like that anime manga mm -hmm. just silliness of like hey there's this big fight scene but also here's a a, a chibi caricature because stupid shit <laughs> oh i, I like you it because it adds like another element of storytelling and honestly i like that because because it made me laugh. I'm like trying to like not to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's okay. Like, but I love that's, that. That's like he's just like, for. yeah, whatever. And the guy's like, hold on, get you know, we don't have time to fool around. I like that. Exactly. And it also it, shows that he does this a lot, apparently, just by his reaction. <laughs> yes, definitely. I'd say Vice is the he's a mixture of like he's like the the clown of the group, like sort of like the cocky clown, but he also has his darker sides, which is actually why I designed him uh, visually like that. You can't mm -hmm. really see it in these shots, but one of his sleeves says love and the other one says hate because a mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Spike Lee's do the right thing. You, then you have Chant up there, who is not only the brains of the outfit, but she's also like the heart of the group. And then you got Shen, the leader, who's just, he can be a little too serious sometimes because mm -hmm. he's just trying to get keep everybody on the same page. You got this guy over here who's trying to have a party. You got her over here who's all happy about it. Like, oh yeah, this is a light work. You know, the, the last adventure they were in, they, they may have almost died. Just <laughs> going in here and it's just some regular villains we got to bust up. Oh yes, let please let us have this. Stuff starts getting a little more serious because fat sex is like the leader of this little bunch right here and he's the only one of them who actually has some of the demon drug in him Ooh, so yeah. he starts whipping out some of his own powers and he's like oh nah you, you took out all my men so now i gotta fuck y'all up and he starts basically throwing lava balls at them and uh that's when um 
they got to start thinking outside the box because it's like, oh, mm. the, this no. guy can make the whole ground explode. So let me actually zero, take this yeah, seriously. Went from zero to 100. <laughs> Pretty much. I love this. Is this yeah. a callback to how comics used to be? They they do still do that. Not as frequently as they used to, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, since we some of the things discussed in the dialogue are direct references to the, um, the free material that I promoted. In addition to having like super strength, agility, awareness, that's sort of like their their passive abilities from being bonded with Ashira. But they mm-hmm. all each have their own individual aura attacks, which is basically a manifestation of something Ashira could do when she was alive. Chance is called the heretic shriek. So, you know, it's a sound based power, but it's it has different applications like she can Mm -hmm. use it to disrupt the abilities of the zealots. She can use it to empower herself. There's a lot in here. I like I like that she has sound powers. It kind of reminds me of Black Canary, but I, I like to hear that you're saying she has different uses for it. There's a few different characters with characters with sound powers. You got Black Canary, mm-hmm. Sindel from Mortal Kombat. So I was thinking, you know, how do I differentiate that? Well, since they are spiritually based powers, you know, there's different things that they can do. So technically it's sound wave, but it's like spiritual sound waves, if that is, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And then we got Vice showing up just <laughs> delivering a nice, uh, a nice tiger knee to go ahead and uh, really show this guy the business. Now, now we actually see him taking it seriously. We see, I like the, right. the contrast with him technically fooling around because he knows he's you know, more powerful than this enemy. And here we see him take it seriously. Like he's willing to go all out when he knows it's a serious situation. You know, he can make that call. He's very good at that. You know, I like definitely seeing how just a few pages, we can see the contrast um, and their different uh, situations. I like that. Definitely. Yeah. I um One of the... One of my favorite parts of writing in general is just being able to show characters personalities and like group dynamics through their actions. How can I display who these people are in what they do and how they interact with the world? So mm-hmm. any it could be anything from their banter to how they perform their moves. The whole issue is going to be 40 pages. Yeah. But if it takes all 40 pages for you just to know who they are on a basic level, then I haven't done my job. I think we've learned a lot in just a few pages here. Well, then, I think there that's you go. fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. I think you've done and, your job. I and, really, yeah. and I like how they each have their own color as well. Yeah. I think that's a really, really nice visual element to keep track of what's happening in the scene, you know, because when you have a lot of characters mm-hmm. in the scene, if it's not done right, it gets, it just seems too, like too much. But this helps a lot. You can see the color here, yeah. you see her moving here, you have a color for her, you can see what's happening. Same with these guys, you know. I love that. Exactly. Then thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I was, I, I really am, I really like where this is heading. And um, yeah. Sorry, the, the thumbs up wasn't for you, it's for Foss Comics. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, thank you for having Animane on. Well, been but you get two thumbs figure. up. Yep. Thank you. Animane. Complimenting Appreciate you guys. It. I love that. All right. All right, so this, now let me actually look at the links I have here. The pre-launch for that is live. If this interests you at all, everybody listening, just bookmark that. He's been working on a lot of this stuff for so long, and I see it all the time. Yeah, it's been a minute. And And you've been very supportive as well. I definitely love the um, the co work that's going on there. And it definitely feels like something I would have seen on Saturday morning about 20 or so years ago. It, ha- it pulls you in. It really does. <laughs> I like that feel. That that feeling of something familiar yet something new, basically, is what yes. I was going for. You did. Well, you nailed um, it, I think. <laughs> thank you. 